let's go for this, okay? Today, I'm going to talk about disease and karma and soul purpose and how it all manifests in the body, okay? These viewpoints are mine. I am not a scientist, thank God. I am not a doctor, thank God. I study spirituality, yay, that's what gets me excited. And I study connection between people, things, nature, and spirit. I just want to show you that this comes from a real life experience that I had. My mother died of ALS. And I follow lots of doctors on Instagram. And this doctor posted an article that just came out that said that mold is a contributing factor to people with ALS, that it can actually develop ALS. And I was like, oh, you know, yeah, you know, like we don't even know how much mold there is. And I understood that in order for you to die, your soul has to give up first. Okay? It is your soul that says, I don't want to do this anymore. I am done. I have not, whatever, changed anything. I, I'm not doing this. Or sometimes the soul can say, you know, like, mm, I gotta go somewhere else. <laughs> Someone else needs me. Bye, buddy. Um, sometimes uh, there are also deaths that are by hand of another these we call murders of course that's not voluntary the soul is not dying voluntarily but it could be karmic um there is like there could be like poison there could be uh mistake accident things like that yeah that this is not the things i'm talking about i'm talking about when you get the disease and you die of a disease and um and so what i understood at that moment when i read that article about the mold and the als i understood that it's it's really interesting but it, the soul in the body is there right and it's living and it's not happy, it's not expressed, and it's something is off, and, and, and just, it cannot change. It cannot change its position. So it's as if the soul picks up on whatever the particles from the surrounding, from the environment, and then matches to that, whatever is the most appropriate way for that soul to pass on. And today, I was like, oh, let me open this old book yeah, that I read eight years ago. It's the Cryon channel. And I open it, I'm not kidding. I open it exactly on a page where he talks about that disease and the, what you're dying of, what your soul passes is in the body, is like a key and lock. The lock is the body. So the body in its imbalanced state has certain like vibration, frequency and opening that will match this virus or this virus, this disease that comes in and allows the disease to take place and opens and opens that lock and the disease shows up in your life. It doesn't mean that you get the disease, you die right away. You can still change, right? When the, when the soul and the body changes that unbalanced state, 
the key will stop working and it just goes away. It, it's not attracted to that body anymore because there is no vibration that matches it. Okay? This is how it works. That's why when you are tired, when you don't get enough sleep, when in whatever way you are imbalanced, okay, even if you are, um, you know, you overindulge in something, it's an imbalance in your body, okay? It's so simple. So whenever there is an imbalance, there is a chance for a disease to manifest, okay? So I always say to myself, I trust my body and I trust that it will not fail me, not trick me in anything. I know when it's time to say bye. I decide. And as long as my soul wants to be here and as long as my soul wants to solve certain issues and wants to balance itself and wants to work on these karmic issues, for that long I'm going to be here. And this body is not going to make a mistake, okay? Unless it's going to be someone else's mistake, yeah? That can come from the outside. This is the divine feminine understanding of the human body and of the disease. This is a spiritual understanding of the disease. So then they say, you know, since pandemic is so popular right now, why do we have pandemics, right? It's because say the people have a very similar vibration within them that matches this thing from the outside. So sometimes you think, oh, it's good to be and do things just as everyone else, because then I will be more protected. If everyone is doing that, then there can be a problem, right? But that is the problem. If everybody's doing things wrongly, it's a chance that you are not going to be able to you, you, you'll go down with the crowd. And how therefore important it is to keep finding the balanced state, okay? Balanced state in the mind, balanced state in the body. As soon as you are in balance in whatever way, there is such a huge option for the disease to step in, no matter what the disease is, right? Whether it's coming from the outside or it's coming from the inside. Um, so that's why we do chant Rama Dasa, because it's so deeply balancing. It's like you're saying to your body to balance all the elements within you. Since we're speaking of life and of imbalance, right, in the body. When you do or eat the same thing, over and over and over and over and over and forever the same. It can also create an imbalance, right? If you have coffee every morning over and over and over or five times a day, it also will create an imbalance in your body, even though you think coffee is healthy or tea, or whatever it is, right? If, even if you eat the healthiest thing, like spinach, every morning, every morning it's spinach, 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 you will create an imbalance in your body. One thing that is for sure is that change is needed no matter what. If you don't have a change, you are creating imbalance in your body. Um, and this is how we need to start looking at our diet as well. You should never eat anything, no matter how good it is, for a way too long time. Because you are creating imbalance. And when we go into our cleanse, we absolutely try 
you know there are some things that you we what we do what we do actually we try to align with the cravings of our body the natural cravings okay so actually your body can tell you i need vitamin c give me it doesn't need vitamin c all the time it doesn't need it every day that's why i don't even believe on taking vitamins every day because it's waste you can actually create imbalance by that um but your body can tell you you know what i really really want vitamin c and you're going to be craving all orange and or grapefruit and lemon and all of that for two weeks and that after that when you look at orange you'll be like oh don't even show me that again i don't want to see that ever again i kind of see it happening with my daughter like i see that you know she is loving cucumber and everyday cucumber and then after like a month she's like oh i can't even look at cucumber and then it some time passes i am not forcing her to do anything to eat cucumber she's like oh this is good and then she starts eating them again so this is exactly what we try to kind of understand in our body in in this cleanse right to have the healthy cravings and to understand what the body needs on its own um, otherwise normal normal palate is destroyed by all kinds of preservatives all kinds of uh, highly processed fats highly processed sugars it destroys your palate and it it changes your brain it makes the brain want it more right but what do we do with the cleanse we cleanse the palate literally and then you start craving the true cravings of your body that help the body feel alive this is what we want to get to and that's why we are not just cleansing for five days or six days just to lose weight um, like many many juice cleanses are super short we are doing it for two weeks or three weeks and we go slowly we start slowly and so that you can first get through that first barrier this is a huge one at the beginning where you um you know have to clear that palate you have to say no to all these processed things uh, so that you clear your palate clear your brain you won't believe how clear your brain will be how much space all of a sudden you're going to have in your thoughts how much how much you will be able to memorize and process when you clear like that because really these uh, these things that we eat these processed fats and sugars and preservatives they as if like um, make the brain cells very busy because the brain cells actually have to send different signal to how to process this and how to process that and how to process this it makes it's, it's so busy it's so busy so your brain is kind of in a fog and you know what it's not just because you are allergic to gluten or you're allergic to uh peanut butter or whatever it's not that it's really that there is just a, this is a highly complicated meal that you just ate and the body and the brain too has to process it it's not just digestion that's processed the brain is has to send different uh proteins and minerals and blah 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 you know to in order to do that so you won't believe how clear your mind is going to be so the first week is really this cleansing this total cleansing okay um and then the second and the third week if you can keep it up is about uh, the natural cravings and it's about eating from the selection from the limited selection that we have eating these things that we crave for real like um I get cravings for um, this spinach or I get cravings for bananas or I get cravings for um, peas oh I love peas so much I get cravings for seaweed or at the beginning I might have craving for seaweed but at the end I can't even look at the seaweed and I'm into something completely else yeah 
So it's just about aligning yourself with the true needs of the body. And that is the healthiest ways to eat. Okay, no matter what someone else is saying, an expert there and there, you listening to your own body, nothing beats that. And in, and in many ways, that this is exactly what we try to get to. Even with meditation, even with channeling, even with connecting with our spirit, listen to yourself. First, you have to remove that, that garbage from the beginning, and then you can truly listen. As I said, I'm not a scientist. I don't want to be a scientist, thank God. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, thank God. But if there is a little spark in you that says, you know what, this could be something for me. This sounds true. And what is it going to hurt? It's only going to hurt my current addictions. That's huge. <laughs> Let's talk about addictions. <laughs> we have so many, yeah? And they don't want to go away. They don't want to go away. So I always tell people, look, this is not forever. You're just putting aside for two weeks, maximum three weeks. Okay? Try it. Just try it. I love experimenting with myself. Why not change things? Why not introduce a little bit of change? So this is what it means to be high vibrational, right? You can have an apple that grew up on a tree during most wonderful summer and it was picked and you eat it right there. The flavor of that apple, it's amazing, juicy, sweet and sour and tart and all of that together. Ooh, crispy. And then you have an apple that um, <laughs> was kind of like always never saw much sun. It was growing somewhere where it was very cloudy, very windy. And, um, and someone picked it up a little too late. And then the apple is like, ugh. You can, have, you can see in vegetable store, you see uh, cauliflower, right? You see avocado or you see lemon. And you just, you can actually sense it. If you get sensitive enough, you can actually sense the vibration of that. And some of them, they, they just don't have vibration. They just look like, ugh. So why would you eat that, you know? And anytime I see something uh, at the vegetable aisle that really catches my eye, I get it. I buy it. Even though I don't know how to cook it, I get it. I just got this endive and it really caught my eye. And I had a few recipes with endive, but I'm not quite sure how I'm going to make this one. Maybe I'll just eat it like this. Um, so this is what we try to get to and, you know, it's kind of similar with people and everything else. We are the same species, but, you know, um, maybe this person, when they grow up, they didn't have this kind of support or they didn't have uh, the right environment or whatever. And it's like the vibration of the person is just not quite fully on. Um, and many things affect that, you know? So, the last thing I would believe is that some external scientist can actually make something better, okay? Like the corn can look big and fat, but if it doesn't have like the flavor and the nutrients that it needs, what's the point? What's the point? Maybe I want the small corn that it's just so dense and it grew in love, with love, with the sun.
I think until we understand this kind of fundamental divine feminine principles, we are not going to make much difference in the world.